Doctors will no longer resign on mass tomorrow as threatened. This is because the GMA has now extended its deadline to July 31 this year. The doctors earlier on gave government up to June 30, 2015 to put in place a document regarding the conditions of service. Can you imagine I collapse whilst operating on a patient? And the hospital will need to call my wife, who is outside this country, to come and buy me medications before I survive. These are the conditions under which many of us work every day, that we have to foot our own hospital bills, even when we get injured at the very hospitals in which we work. Extension of the deadline has become necessary to allow negotiations with government on their conditions of service to continue. Failure to meet this deadline, the GMS General Assembly warns it will direct for a gradual withdrawal of services in the month of August. So what really has delayed negotiations to bring it close to this matter? Is it that the GMA is demanding too much so that government is unable to meet their demands? Or is government reluctant to resolve this pending issue to save all of us from bearing the brunt of a mass resignation of doctors? But is it right at all for the doctors to decide to resign and block in the event that their demands are not met? This is today's big story. My name is Aishi Ibrahim. We'll be back shortly. Well, on the line is Dr. Ernest Yuck. He will be telling us much about this conditions of service they're demanding. Good evening, Dr. Ernest Yuck. Many thanks for your time. Hello. Hello, Mr. Ernest Yuck. Yes. You are on today's big story. Hello. Hello, Mr. Yuck. You are on today's big story. Good, yes. Good so, evening. Uh, the line was playing up a bit. I believe it's better now. It is, it is, so we can go ahead. We, we understand negotiations has started and already, and, and that's, that's why you have extended the deadline. What, what stage are you now with negotiations? Um, actually, uh, it started this morning. Um, over the weekend, we had to set the ground rules. And uh, what it means is that how we are going to conduct these discussions or negotiations. And we all came to an amicable, amicable agreement and we signed it. And so in earnest, as we already said, that we are committed to the process. We attended a meeting that we were invited to. And I must tell you that, yes, indeed, uh, we, we had our preliminary meeting this morning. Exactly what has delayed the negotiations? I think the negotiations has never the delay in the negotiations has never been the fault of GMA. Okay. What if you remember and listeners, I'm sure viewers would to, to do. Eight months ago, we issued um, a request to the government that um, doctors and, for that matter, most health workers have never had a condition of service uh, document to guide their engagement as professionals, and we were asking for one, especially when we we've been deceived in the past that that will be done, and that has never been done. And so we gave an eight-month ultimatum, and within which we were hoping that negotiations would start. But up until uh, only about two months ago that we had our first meeting, even not to discuss the document itself, but to lay the ground rules or put together what we call the, the framework for negotiations. So if you ask me, it is a part or the fault of our employer that has caused all these delays. It is never the fault of GMA. Uh, but you, you boycotted the signing of a, a condition of service for, for yourself last week. Uh, what exactly are you expecting? Because your explanation last week was that you were not clear with the content in that document. So what exactly are you expecting from government? It, it, it's part of the propaganda. And I'm, I'm, I, I overheard Tony Goodman later on apologizing for what they did. It was a ploy to deceive the public and the very good people of Ghana. What happens was, as I've said already, we were talking or discussing the framework. The framework guides everybody involved in the negotiations, what exactly you guys will be talking about. Okay? Right. And that was a document that was going to, we were going to review. And indeed, they had made new uh, changes and inputs 
into it that we are not aware. And we're not going to sign a document that we are not confident or don't understand what the contents are. That is how can we didn't sign the framework, not the conditions of service document. The meeting that we had today is the first meeting with respect to the conditions of service document. Right. So let me tell you, uh, viewers and everybody, that that was a, a, a propaganda uh, machinery that was set in place. So there was no was document to be signed? There was no document to be signed. And again, I tell you, it's the framework we were discussing how we were going to go about the negotiations proper. And once we all agreed, we're going to append our signature and then start the negotiations proper for the conditions of service. When we went, they had made new inputs into the framework and we said we wouldn't sign. It was never, and I repeat, never the conditions of service document. We only started today, and the good people of Ghana must know. So let's look at what exactly your expectations are. Well, um, we reviewed what has happened so far and we all agree and understand that at least we have a framework we also have an understanding what the grand rules are and both sides have committed to complete this within a month and i'm sure that as reasonable people um we reviewed the situation we called the uh, meeting of all doctors in ghana right and i think that um they were quite magnanimous and said that uh, well once all of you have committed yourself to a month deadline to complete this, let's give the government the space mm -hmm. and also the negotiation team the space to do so. Right. And that is exactly what we are going to do. Mm -hmm. And we'll hold them to that promise. But, but what don't you think you're demanding for so much? Probably that is why it is taking government such a long time to address your issues. Hey, I'm, sh I'm pretty sure you have a condition of service document with your employer with uh, your employer at multimedia mm. and i'm not sure it's about too much it's about what is right right it is not just about money it's about how you are engaged how you exit where uh, the issues of termination of employment issues of progression issues of of course remuneration yes but it goes beyond just money it is not money i'm sure if you look into your contract it's not just about money it's about your rights and responsibilities mm. all the time we are being told that we are essential service and therefore certain responsibilities accrue to us mm. but what's our entitlement we never know you know so we are being treated in a very bad way by employers and we think this is not fair we came to signing one a couple of years ago we were told to hold on because single spine was being uh, we uh, contain some aspects of that policy. We did. Single span has been implemented for about three years. Nothing has happened. Mm. And I think that it is fair that any decent employer, where he sought, moreover, when we are, empl uh, we are um, uh, um, um, professional, we deserve to have conditions. But I think we are, we are not asking for too much. You're talking about essential services, and that's uh, making me, or oh, I'm attempted to ask you the question that uh, there are concerns that essential services, people who provide essential services, uh, cannot uh, take the kind of decision you are taking right now. Um, don't you think you're mistaken by taking this this decision because as an essential service provider you're not supposed to go on strike talkless of resigning on mass it 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 it's never stated anywhere that uh, in the labor laws that essential service cannot go on strike what it says is that one when the dispute arises or arise between uh, it stipulates the number of days that that should be sorted if with the, um, between the employer and the employee they are not able to do that then you have to resort to arbitration if you after arbitration you're still not satisfied um, you can take the case um, um, to another level but it still reserves the right uh, for employees to engage in strike we have to satisfy a certain minimum uh, days of notice to employer and once that is done and you are not satisfied with the processes that has gone on, you are liberty to, to, to go on strike. But you see, um, we are always being reminded of this as um, a responsibility of doctors. Mm. Hello? Yes, you are still on yes. today's big yes. story. Yes, so we, we are being reminded as being that, that being a responsibility or something that um, essential services um, should do or should not do. Right. But what our what about our rights, hmm. what also accrued to us as, as an essential service. Okay. That nobody is talking about. So I, don't, I think that the good people of Ghana should rather push the government, push our employer to say that these people are professionals. Please give them a valid contract for them to work so that they can hold you to it 
And you can also hold them to their responsibility. Okay, Dr. Yog, let me hold you on one minute because on the other line is um, Kwesi Dansui Champo. He's a labor consultant. Good evening. Many thanks for your time on today's big story. Uh, good evening. Mr. Champo, quickly, what does the labor law say about uh, essential services? Um, it basically, you know, section one of the labor law. Uh, makes it clear that an employer carrying on or a worker engaging in an essential services shall not resort to a lockout or strike action. That is the law. Okay. Basically, and, that is the law. The and, law. and so judging from what the labor law is saying, would you say it's unjustifiable for the uh, GMA, uh, for GMA to decide to resign en masse? No, for resignation en masse, it's not provided in law. That one is your right. Okay. I mean, we are not under, you know, slavery. Any employment relations is not, you know, slavery. One can leave. That's why the provision for a worker to resign, the employer can also terminate, mm. you know. So it's when they want to go on strike that you need to find out that as an essential service, can they go on strike? Then the law, if you go to Section 63, it will say no. But the whole thing has to be put in context. Uh, you know, the, the law wants a expeditious resolution of the matters that affect those who have been categorized as essential services under Regulation 20 of LI 1833. Right. So those that have been listed there, are supposed to be institutions or uh, uh, bodies that carry on certain uh, vital uh, 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 provide certain vital uh, services, and therefore the law classifies them as essential services. Okay. For them, what the law wants us to give for them mm. on is that mm. any time there's a problem, right, we should not delay. Okay. You know so. The matter of the negotiating for their own uh, terms and conditions of service, I okay. think it's been prolonged for too long. Okay. You know, hmm. and therefore when you do that, it becomes very difficult to also retain them under the law. All right. So what the law says, expeditious dealing of their matters so that even when they deadlock, they go straight to labor committee hmm. for compulsory arbitration. Okay. The implication is that. The employer and the workers will sit down and ensure that they go through whatever processes on time, so that you don't begin pushing one to the you know brink, okay. as we find ourselves here. Right. But for them going on mass resignation, is their right, and the law will not stop them. Okay. But so if you are going on strike, then the law says, hey, you are essential service, you may not go. But I think that whether they will go on strike or go on mass resignation. Hmm. The Fair Wages Commission mm. to take proper mandate from government right. and sit down and conclude this agreement with the doctors. I'm tempted to ask you this question because uh, these people uh, who can have, cannot, we cannot afford to lose them even for a second because they provide essential services. And there are concerns that government is not handling the matter with the agency it needs. Do, do you agree with that? Yes, that's what I'm saying. That. The, the, the whole thing of bringing out institutions we classify as essential services, well, that's fine. By international standard, institutions that when they go on strike will have such a telling effect on the whole nation to be classified as essential services. And it says that if the law takes away their right to go on strike, that law cannot be said to be unconstitutional because it affects their right. That is the law, the basic law. Then what is the compensatory provision for taking that right out? Mm. It's for them to have a seditious resolution of whatever concerns they have. And therefore, if what they are talking about is to get them terms and conditions of service mm. that have been in the process for this while, what is holding them, the government or the, the Fair Wages Commission, taking the proper mandate mm. and sitting down with them to conclude? So if you were a consultant uh, in this whole uh, uh, matter, what, what advice would you give to government? 
I will tell the government that, look, after translating all public sector employees onto the single spine, the next thing is to have for them terms and conditions of service so that the perennial situation that every year there's agitation for improvement of things, uh, allowances, will be done away with. But when you have a collective agreement, it gives you a lifespan, maybe three years. Mm. Within the three years, the government has its peace, the workers have their peace. Mm. The whole nation will also benefit from that type of contract because there will be no you know, agitation. Okay. Like the private sector. Mm. The economy is hard, but the private sector is quiet because most of them are living under collective agreement. Mm. That ties them to specific time that they need to negotiate terms and conditions of service mm. and also negotiate uh, wages okay. in, in between. Okay. When the time is not due, the least you can do is to beg the employer for cost of living allowance. Okay. But you cannot go on strike because your pocket is dry. Okay. Because the collective agreement has tied you down mm. to three years for collective agreement review, yeah. 18 months for wage opener for you to talk about wages. Right. So if you are able to get conditions of service for the doctors and all the public sector employees, as they have been classified mm. under nine classifications under the single spine, the nation will benefit because we're going to have a more peaceful public sector mm. that will benefit all of us. So I think that the government should, you know, massage resources, give to uh, uh, give mandate to the fair wages so that they can sit down with these classified unions and deal with this matter once and for all. Because if you, even though if these doctors go or mass, it's likely you employ a new one. Yes. They will also go through the same thing. But no worker will work without terms and conditions of service yeah. being known to him or her. Exactly. And it's as simple as that. Okay. Well, many thanks to you, uh, Mr. Kwisi Echampo, uh, point well noted. Let me go on to the other phone lines where Dr. Ennis York is still uh, hanging on. Uh, Dr. York? Yeah. Yes. Uh, specifically, what are the services that you're looking for from government? I'm not sure um, um, <laughs> employers or employees uh, discuss their conditions of service document in So public. that's private. But let's look it, at the way it, the it liberations are going. Is there any hope by the end of July? Well, um, you see, we are ready 24 hours um, 7, and we are committed. Let's remind uh, your, your viewers that we met them on Friday, we met them on Saturday, we met them on Sunday, we met them today. So the uh, uh, commitment is there on our side. Mm. We are just hoping that the other side uh, would also show same and uh, for us to conclude this quickly, um, I heard the minister saying on, on radio that we can even do this within two weeks. Who, mm -hmm. uh, oh, la, la, if that is possible, fair enough. Right. Everybody, you know, goes back um, and then continue their work. Okay. What we just need is a, a valid condition of service document uh, that um, holds both the employer and the employee to a contract. That's all we need. Nothing let let me like play that. the devil's advocate. You are caught between your patients and, and, and government right now. Uh, in case it doesn't go as planned. Uh, would you consider being a bit flexible about you um, going on or resigning on mass? Well, we, we are reasonable people. Uh, let's get there, and when we get there, we'll cross the bridge. But let me put it on record that when we met today, um, the General Assembly decided that come the end of July, if we don't have it, uh, there will definitely be an industrial action. That we can assure the people of Ghana. Because well, I think we've, we've, we've been at this for far too long, and we can't continue being with that condition of service anymore. Dr. York, all the best in your negotiation. Many thanks to you. Extremely grateful on today's big story. But the extension of the deadline uh, has become necessary, as we discussed earlier, that... Um, Negotiation has not gone well, so they had to extend the time uh, for government to have ample time to discuss the issues. But if government fails to meet the deadline come July 31, the doctors have threatened to halt their services at the outpatient departments of all medical facilities in the first week of August. Not just that, a lineup of activities will follow, and that will culminate in the implementation of the GMA's final decision to resign. Let's now hear from the Deputy General Secretary of the GMA. We've decided that the Takwari decision has been moved forward by a month, specifically 
it will end 18 hours 29 July 2015. If by that period the employer has not completed negotiations plus the signing of the document with us, what is going to happen is that the first one week there is going to be withdrawal of OPD service. The second week we will have withdrawal of OPD and emergency services. The third week we will have a total withdrawal and that will culminate in the final bits of the decision making, that is the resignation and block. So now what the, the, the General Assembly has done is that they spot out the processes. That is what is going to happen. So let's get the record straight. The GMA has been on this beat for quite some time now. The doctors became impatient recently when they felt government was not paying attention to their demand. The question has been, why the demand now? And what exactly the doctors are expecting in this negotiation? Let's listen to some of them we spoke to earlier on. Can you imagine I collapse whilst operating on a patient? And the hospital will need to call my wife, who is outside this country, to come and buy me medications before I survive. These are the conditions under which many of us work every day, that we have to foot our own hospital bills, even when we get injured at the very hospitals in which we work. And we've looked at people who actually come from these same ministries, from government agencies, draws on the same uh, public purse, all right? They are all paid from the same place. And these guys come to our hospitals, the same Ministry of Health, foot their bills just because they hold certain positions, which, with all due respect, does not even compare to the work that many of these doctors do today. So I think that the morale among doctors over the years has been very low. And if time had permitted, I would have shown you my appointment letter when I completed medical school. It was stated as part of the third sentence that the board will later decide my conditions of service. And as I speak to you today, just last month was 10 years when I completed medical school. And I'm sure those who worked even 10 years before me would have also had the same letter. And I think that the way to boost the morale of workers is to give them a better conditions of service, which we don't have. We don't have conditions. It's not as if we are calling for a good or a better or the best conditions of we've never had conditions and i think it's an indictment on even us as doctors that with our level of education over the years we've worked we've sacrificed without all these conditions well my expectations is that government would accept the magnanimity of the general assembly of the ghana medical association and work within the 30 days to ensure that we didn't come to the decision that the AGM took today, which I think will be unfair to the general population. It's not about more money, it's about conditions of service. And yeah, every world um, knows about what goes into conditions of service. When you are engaged, you have a condition that governs your relationship with your employer, which we do not have as doctors. And I, I hope and believe that by the end of this 30 days period, it will come into force. And indeed, the rules of engagement states that it's not just about signing a piece of document, but then it's coming into force with the, uh, with the signatures that will go along with the document. So on the phone lines is an ADR practitioner and labor management consultant, Ben Arthur. Good evening, and we thank you so much for joining in the discussion. Uh, good evening, uh, Aisha, and good evening to all your cherished viewers. Many thanks for your time. Now, any time issues of this matter arise, government hide under the sleeve that essential workers or essential service providers do not have the right to go on strike and all of that. But in all of these, what are the privileges or what rights do these essential service providers also enjoy, according to the labor law? Uh, they, they enjoy all the rights of a worker, except the, the provision that essential workers do not have the right under the law to embark on strike. So apart from what I've just mentioned, any other right 
that a worker enjoys under the labor law. People under essential workers kind of category also enjoy this kind of uh, right. So they are not too different from other workforce or other employment relations that other workers have with their employers. It's not too different, except that clause that says that when there's a dispute, they can never to settle it within the shortest possible time. They are not entitled to strike here. Yeah. So, so does the labor law spell out how they can also go about uh, getting government to, to accept or to, to provide a certain demands for them? No, yes, de definitely. For example, when there is any matter that is meant for negotiation, any matter that there is any disagreement on, they ought to negotiate in good faith. It's not just the workers. It's a responsibility. It's a joint responsibility of the employers and the workers in that sector. And in this particular case, the Ghana Medical Association or workers under the Ghana Medical Association, with the Ghana Health Service as the employer or the government of Ghana as the employer, they have the responsibility. It's obligatory for them to negotiate in good faith mm. of any matter concerning the employment relationship. Right. And the particular section, uh, which is relevant to this case, is section 98. Right. It talks about, uh, sorry, 97 talks about negotiating in good faith. Okay. That all parties. It says that all parties to a negotiation of a collective agreement shall negotiate in good faith and make every reasonable effort to reach an agreement. It talks about sharing the relevant information and the rest. But when you get to 98, hmm. it also talks about the content of a collective agreement. And basically, it talks about the conditions of service right. and even the method of calculating their conditions and the rest. Okay. All this information must be shared. Hmm. When it comes to the rights of an employer and the duties of an employer to an employer has the duty has the responsibility to open channels of communication towards workers mm -hmm. and to share with them any relevant information about the workplace okay. so essentially uh, they are demanding for what belongs to them or what they, they're supposed to get uh, conditions of service because every worker has to get conditions of service. Um, looking at the issue, you have been following the issue all this while, and, and, and it's rather unfortunate that we cannot lose doctors, a lot of doctors resigning at the same time. I think that will affect us uh, as a country. Uh, going forward, uh, how, do, how should we handle this matter? First, when there is a dispute of this nature, the, the first thing is, the parties must endeavor to negotiate in good faith within the shortest possible time. We're talking about seven days. If within seven days this matter remains unresolved, one of the parties must report it to the National Labor Commission. Right. And immediately, compulsory arbitration will be conducted on the matter and the solution found or an arbitral award issued. Okay. So that is how it has to be. Uh, barring any other thing from this will be will be chaos. Hmm. And that is what I, I, I foresee. That once we are not going to have the uh, people under essential workers, uh, GMA workers, sorry, members of the GMA right. going to go by uh, section 162, definitely there will be chaos. If the employer is also not going to go by it, there will be chaos. If you don't mind, let me just get out some particular conditions of that. In any that, that should be briefly because we are running out of yes, time. In any In, the, in, in this case, right. they should endeavor to settle the dispute within three days mm. of the occurrence of the dispute by negotiation. Okay. If after the three days the dispute remains unresolved, then the parties shall within 24 hours of the expiry of the three days. Right. They ought to refer the matter to the Labor Commission for settlement by compulsory arbitration. And that's what is provided in the Labor Act. And you foresee that it will, it will definitely end that way, right? So, yes. Now, normally, you see, what has happened is that the employer and the workers have failed to negotiate. And they have failed 
to resolve this matter within the shortest possible time. Which well, is, many is, thanks is to you. I, I think I think the impulse of uh, what you're trying to say is that um, because the two of them are not agreeing on something, there may be chaos at the end of the day. But we're all looking forward to something positive. Many thanks to you, Ben Atta. And this is today's big story. We'll be back with Joy News Interactive.